Mustangs, living symbols of the early West. Rugged, free, independent. They came with the conquistadores to explore their ancient home. Some escaped to join the wild, running with the buffalo, with the Indian, free in a land even stranger to horse than it was to man. They band together in family herds. A wise old mare in the lead and a stallion in charge to warn of danger and force them to run. Speed, their greatest defense. But the West would change and move in from the East and speed would not be enough. Mountain men and cattle men and settlers, all wanting a place on the land, the peace of the land, carving the open spaces with fences and roads, pushing out the buffalo, the Indian, and the mustang, using him to feed their dog and make their glue. There were two million wild horses at the turn of the century, only 40,000 in the bicentennial year, and still, to some, to the rancher, that seems too many. Too many mustangs grazing government lands in competition with cows. So they run to remain free. Two million at the turn of the century. 40,000 in the bicentennial year. A lot of this land is still wide open spaces and it's just like it was 100 years ago. There is no more after this is gone. This is the last frontier. When you get to thinking and philosophizing, the, what's this land going to be like when, when our children's children's children get to be our age? Will they have an opportunity to go out into these big, wide open valleys? And will they be able to see any wild horses out there? What is the future of all of us? We're running out of everything. If it's going to be rough on people survival, you can just darn bet you it's going to be harder on animal survival. Just get rid of them. Just get, that's all the horses, wild horses have ever known. Get rid of them so the ranchers could have the uh, land for their cattle. We're like probably any rancher. A big percentage would tell you they like to see a few wild horses. It was just a natural heritage. But we still want to be practical about it. We want management on cattle. We can't make a living unless cattle are managed or sheep. And but still, we want to we don't want to see the horses destroy the the Great West either. We were one of the first one to use fixed wing aircraft, uh, and we're successful at it. <laughs>
to a life they barely won. They all look pretty when they're running. Of course, it's just that thrill of running it. And, but when you get them in, it's quite a disappointment, usually. You, uh, uh, every once in a while, you get a thrill of one being real good looking and being the, the storybook, you know, uh, but m mostly not there. Mostly uh, when they get in their long heads and big feet. What we're faced with a lot is economy. As the horses build up, the cattle numbers will be reduced. And eventually, there won't be any livestock on the public lands that the wild horses will have at all. Any good thinking people are going to see that we do need control. It has to come back into something like fixed wing aircraft. As long as it's done in a humane way and, and government controlled uh, slaughter plants are humane. There is no other animal in the history of our country that has been so brutally exploited. I talked to him, our one congressman from Nevada. One day he was in the office, we were shooting the breeze. And I said, well, would you introduce a bill in Congress? And I told him what I'd like to have, and he said, sure. So he, he did, and it was in 1959 that the action took place against uh, aircraft on all of the public land in the western United States. The use of aircraft was indiscriminate and brutal of a bunch of horses that were brought in here to Reno uh, yearling had been driven so hard and into that trap so hard and he hit the other side, and his chest was just wide open like that. And he was in the stockyards for about three days, and then I presume he died, or they killed him or something. But they didn't right away. People have different degrees of humaneness. And I guess to them, it was just a marketable commodity. I have a picture of a horse with its right hind leg shot off and left. I, uh, I would be willing to venture a guess that that's happening thousands of times over throughout the West in remote areas. This one just happened to be found. I uh, particularly like the response of the children programs I give in the schools. You can almost see the stars and stripes waving in their eyeballs when you give them a stirring talk and about we the people, government by the people, we the people. That means you kids, too. It isn't just us grown-ups that are the people that I'm talking about. Because these horses belong to all the people of America, and they exist on land that belongs to all the people of America. see a skeleton out there and naturally it's too late. You have to really analyze the range and if the range is in good condition, well then the animals are in good condition. The range in my professional opinion is deteriorating due to an overgrazing situation by domestic livestock as well as wild horses. So our only alternative was to remove approximately 400 head of horses.
Mustangs are taken away from the wind and the plains they call their home. Corral to live another life, a different than they've known. But the spirit of their fight lives on, and if you still left to roam, it's hard to live a fugitive on land that is. They're wild and on the run From the plains, the traps and the guns They're wild and on the run To a life they barely want To a life they People could write to us if they wanted to adopt one of these horses. They uh, never can own these animals. They remain the property of the federal government. Really what they are is a, a foster parent, and they're just taking care of these animals during their lifetime. Yeah, in less than a week. They respond. They're just, they're, they're just like... Uh, uh, three days. If it wasn't for Paul Revere's horse, he yeah. would not have made his famous ride. The horse is a part of America, and the American public owes it to that animal to take care of it when it can no longer take care of itself. It's just like, okay, my mother is old, and she's not, el she's not able to work right now, so we help support her. That's only right. I think some of these older ones are going to be very, very difficult to tame down. They've uh, run out on the range and all their lives, you know, be a, a real tough job for them to tame down so that you could trust them. If we can't find a home for them and that nobody wants to take them, then we don't have any alternative but to destroy them. Thank you. 